Welcome to How You Pictured It, the podcast for creative entrepreneurs ready to grow their business in a way that feels good. Here you'll find actionable tips and tools to create the business and life you pictured. I'm your host, Kate Hyde with Dear Kate Brand Strategy. Let's get started. Today's episode is an interview with Lisa Rabel of Rebel Girl Marketing. We had a great conversation all about networking, which is timely as I head to the Creative Educator Conference this coming week. I'm so excited to meet other creative educators. Um, But this interview was all about figuring out your perfect pitch, your power pitch, as Lisa calls it, and how you introduce yourself at networking, how networking can benefit you. Um, And we talked about ways to get into it and be more comfortable even when you're an introvert at a networking event. Let's dive into it. I am here today with Lisa Rabel. I am going to let Lisa introduce herself to you. I am so excited to chat with her today. Go ahead and say hi, Lisa, and tell us about who you are, what you do, and a little bit about your uh, life as well. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited to be here today. I Supporting entrepreneurs, solo entrepreneurs, is like my passion and my mission in life. Um, I take the 30 plus years that I've been in corporate America in both sales and marketing and convert it into trainings and under and real life applications to small businesses and solo entrepreneurs. So my job is a marketing strategist, period, end of sentence. That's what I do the best. Um, I help entrepreneurs understand who their client is, what they're selling, because people don't actually think about what they sell sometimes and how that relates to the marketing and where their ideal client hangs out. And who that ideal client is. Um, People jump into the marketing without actually answering foundational questions first. So they're committing random acts of marketing, which is the title of my book. Um, And so it's it's more about being strategic and intentional with your marketing. And I love doing that. I do it on stages. I do it with my book. I do it with podcasting. It's it's a lot of fun. Tell me about your book. So the Rebel Girl's Guide to Marketing um, was born out of the fact that I kept getting asked when my book is coming out and I kept saying, what book? Um, So what I do is I do a whole bunch of different kinds of training and they're like, it would be great for solo entrepreneurs to have it all in like one spot. So it's, it's all those questions. Why do you need marketing in the first place? Who is your ideal client? What are you actually selling? What are you going to say once you get there? And, and if you're going to network on purpose, so people go to networking thinking, well, I need to network. They don't think about where they're networking or who they're networking or what are they going to say? So I, I usually, I, the most popular speaking that I have is the, the power of your pitch because a pitch literally is a first impression. And if you don't take it seriously, you might not be making a right first impression. So the book came out of the fact that I do so many of these little, like little trainings. I just put it all in one place. I love that. Yeah. So let's talk more about networking. That's what we're going to chat about today. We're going to talk about pitching. Let's talk about how networking helps small business owners and solopreneurs especially. Yeah. It's important because no matter what you sell, it's a relationship. You're selling to a human, right? There's a whole movement, B to H, business to human versus business to business or business to consumer. And so this whole business to human capacity is people. So marketing in its core is no like trust. It's they have to know you exist, like what you say and trust you enough to buy from you. And networking helps move that relationship along much fa- faster than trying to get them through email campaigns or through marketing, showing up showing up the best version of yourself is a great way to get known and people like you much faster than if you tried to market through other channels. So networking, I think is extremely important. So what are some ways that small business owners can get started with networking? Networking is very um, specific. So in my opinion, there's three ways to network. Um, You have to go off of the, the same thing about there's, there's buyers, there's end users, and there's influencers. You have lead gen, which is networking. And that's specifically going someplace where you know the buyers or end users hang out. But there's also a sense of community. And as as entrepreneurs, especially like me as a solo entrepreneur, a sense of community is really, really important. I need to hang around with like-minded people who understand the trials and tribulations of being your own boss and your own salesperson and wearing all the hats we get to wear, right? Um, So a sense of community, but also education. And so as a marketing professional, I'm part of the American Marketing Association. I'm part of different organizations that help me be better at what I do as a professional. 
So to get started, I would pick one of those three categories. Where can I find people that are like-minded like me, that can get me the support and the sense of community? Where can I go to get lead generations? It's not always your local chamber. It's, it could be an industry. If you sell to a specific industry, let's take school districts, for example, the Association of School Business Professionals is all over the country. And there's an international one too. So if you sell specifically to school districts, go find that association that can get you in front of the right people. And so it could doesn't need to be people within your industry. It could be the people, the industries that you sell to. And as far as influencers are concerned, that might be the chamber then. That might be the people who influence other business owners or whomever your ideal client might be. So networking could be more than just like going to like the coffee shop meetup of a bunch of business owners. It could be more like teaching or um, speaking to a group of people as well. Yes, absolutely. So in my networking at Purpose Training, what I talk about is the the short, the mid and the long-term goals of networking. You're not going to show up at one networking event and they're going people are going to give you a whole bunch of money and buy from you. That's not what's going to happen. So it's about the short-term goals. Short-term goals is that no, they need to know you exist and show up consistently to build that trust and the like aspect of you. Get that brand recognition, right? Um, so that's really important to do that. And go in there with the intention of giving first. Anytime that I give the attention of like, I'm going to give more than I get in a networking event, I always somehow get still re- something out of it, whether it's learning or leads or even a one-on-one meeting to somebody that that might fill that education or community or lead generation. It's about giving first. If you go with the giving attitude, I'm telling you 100% of the time, you're going to have a better experience. So we get to our networking event. How do you suggest we like introduce ourselves, get started while we're there. First, the first thing you need to do before you even walk in a door, before you walk into the coffee shop to do a one-on-one, before you do anything networking, you need to check yourself. Because I'm not sure about you, but I have come into a parking lot with my hair on fire, running a couple minutes late, and I'm all like, you know, disheveled and everything like that. And you just need to check yourself. Because you walk into that coffee shop with your hair on fire, the person you're meeting with is going to be like, whoa. (laughs) <laughs> okay, this is, I'm going to make this real quick. Maybe how fast can I drink my coffee to get out of this, right? So you need to make a really, really, really good first impression because that's what a pitch is when you do your elevator pitch or sales pitch, which I would love to get rid of those terms. I'd love to change it to a power pitch instead because you're not going to sell somebody in the first 30 seconds you meet them, but right. that's a whole other topic. Check yourself first. If you've had a really bad day or got a really bad phone call and you're going to go into a networking event, Take five minutes, breathe, listen to your favorite music. You know, for me, it's throw on some Bon Jovi or some some Bob Marley and sing for like sing really loud in my car for just a couple of minutes to kind of get check myself. And once I've checked myself and I'm in the proper mindset and the mind space to walk in that door, then it's all about like, you know, setting goals. I want to talk to have three great conversations instead of handing 20 people my business card in five minutes, right? So what are those goals? Um, the other thing I would do is make sure that you do have a really good pitch because the the worst thing you could do is someone to say, so what do you do? And you're like, well, I kind of sort of maybe do this. And well, you know, we, we talk about these things and I don't know. And then, then you got the people that like show up and throw up, right? The people who like, so what do you do? And two minutes later, they're still talking. <laughs> so it's really important to check yourself, make sure you're in the right mindset and make sure you have a pitch that really works and grabs somebody's attention. So, but once you get there, yeah, you have the goals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What kinds of things do you feel grab people's attention then when you start pitching or humor start doing that? Okay. Seriously, humor. I don't know where we stopped having humor in business. Why did we stop? Like, why is it not not okay anymore? I don't understand. So um, I like to use humor, especially in general networking. You know, those like, it's not very industry specific or something. If it's industry specific, have an industry specific pitch. But I'll give you a perfect example. I have a friend and a client, she's a life coach. And, you know, when I'd ask her like, so what do you do? She, people would ask her, be like, well, I have this, take these people through this inside out journey and take them in this transformational blood. And I'm like, Ooh, that's very life coachy of you. Um, let's pull back. 
And so we do this process. I have a, a you know, a five-step process that to have people create a power pitch. And we created one. The one that we ended up with was I unconstipate the mind and spirit so you can be you. People are like, you unconstipate the mind? Just like, tell me more, right? It's funny. And people like remember her because she's the one who unconstipates you. So it's just using humor. I say I'm the Nanny McPhee of marketing. People go, wait, what? And so it's it's until Disney catches up with me at least. And so it's like that whole like, how do you grab their attention with humor? I never say that I'm a mark, you know, a consultant. Um, you know, I, she doesn't use she doesn't lead with I'm a life and leadership coach. You lead with what's going to grab their attention. So more like how you help people. But yeah. do it in a clever kind of fun, intriguing, mystery building way. <laughs> exactly. And it's about them, not about you. It's I say this in the book too. It's your story, but it's their journey. I'm gonna say that again. It's your story, but it's their journey. And you want them to engage in that journey. So make it about them. Can we get into like maybe trying this? kind of how to, how to build a pitch for someone. Like Absolutely. we can either run it off of my business or if you want to do like a fake business or whatever. No, let's how... do you. Come on. Okay. That's, that'll so, still be fun. You got a pen and paper? All right. I do actually. Let okay. It, it usually takes go. a lot longer than I'm going to take it from you. <laughs> Give me a baby version. Yeah, yes. Exactly. So what I want, anybody who's listening, if uh, unless you're driving or walking the dog, of course, like be safe. Um, but you take a blank piece of paper and you divide it to three into thirds. The first one is what and how. The sec the second section is problems and um, emotions, not emotional problems, but problems and emotions. And the third one is why. So I'm a massive Simon Sinek fan, and start with why and find your why and the infinite game, the whole nine yards, right? So I like knowing my why. So it's very simple. In the very top section, the what and the how, it's what you do and how you do it. So what you do literally could just be your title. Make it simple. Don't complicate this. And then the how is what do you do every day? Like what do you physically and mentally do every day? Like for me, it would be, well, let's, it doesn't matter about me. Let's talk about you. What What is yeah. your business and what do you do? So web design and coaching. Okay. For creative entrepreneurs. Okay. Coaching, how do, what do you, coaching what? Website coaching, web design Website coaching. coaching. Okay. So the, the, what is the website developer and coaching, right? Website creation. And then the, then the how is I have one-on-one -on -one conversations with my clients. I, um, I, I do a question, you know, a discovery call with them to find out what they're looking for. I find out more about their product. I find more about them. I want to know what their style is. Like there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff you have to do right. to be able to create a website. People don't understand that there's a whole like huge amount of homework to do before you can even start on the programming. And yeah. so it's not about the coding and stuff. It's about learning the person and learning about what you do. So the how is, you know, I spend time on, WordPress or whatever format that is of your choice, I start developing it. I give them samples of three different choices that let them decide which one works for them, right? That's the how. Right. And then the problems and emotions is about like, what problems do you solve? You solve some um, brand awareness problems. You can solve um, being found like SEO problems, right? You, the, the problems that you solve is like getting found so people know you exist, it's also making sure that they look professional and legitimate with the website being very professional. You solve those kinds of problems. Now, here's the tricky part. There are emotions that go with every one of those problems that you solve. Right. So for me, when I um, had a client that we did a, a, a new website for, she got all teary-eyed and I was like, are you okay? She's like, I'm finally proud of the, our website. I'm finally proud to show people what we do I never said to, to, told people I had a website because I was so embarrassed by it, right? So pride is an emotion or confidence or joy, any of those emotions that come out of it, right? So it could be relief. Oh, thank God I don't have to design my own website because I have this professional doing it. I mean, it's all of those things. And then the why, I'm not sure if you've done your why, but it's why did you pick web design? Why, what, what is it about that industry that gets, that gets you yeah. going? Well, really, it's the fact that I want small business owners to be able to be found without constantly being on social media and like 
doing that constant churn. Um, I want them to be able to show up proudly um, and represent their business online and drive traffic into them, like become a magnet for traffic instead of having to be constantly fighting for it right? so that they can get back to their the life that they pictured when they started their business. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. So if we wrote all of those things we just talked about down, we talked about what you do, how you do it. And then we talked about what problems you solve, the emotions that go with it. And we talked about that why. If you wrote all of that down on your piece of paper, there would be power words in there. And the power words are the words that resonate with the audience, not with you. It might mean something to you too, but you want to pick the power words that are going to resonate with them. And so once you pick those out, then you can start building a, a then you can start building a pitch. It could be, um, you know, my job as a web designer is to help small businesses get found so that they can stay in business. It grabs the emotional side. It talks about the problems that you solve, but also tells about what you do. So the two that I have are, I'm the Nanny McPhee of marketing. I help my clients until they need me and then I'm gone. Because a lot of times people hire, they say the hire consultant, like, oh, she's going to be around forever. How do I get rid of this woman? Right. But it's literally like, it could be two months you need me. It could be two years you need me, whatever that looks like. As long as you need help, I'll be here. But if once, you know, teach a man to market, teach a man to fish. Once you don't, I, you know, I tell my clients, eventually you're going to want to fire me because you'll be confident and know what you want to do in your marketing and you can do it yourself or you can hire an agency to do it. And you're going to want to say, thank you, Lisa, but I got this, which is like the biggest compliment I could ever have. So for you, it's this, it's the same concept for you. It's a very much more ongoing because you have the maintenance and you've got all the things in the back end, and you got to change the website for SEO and all the algorithms. Right. So it's the same thing. So with that said, how would you succinctly within 15 seconds, tell people what you do if you're in networking and say, so what do you do? Yeah, I right now I say I help um, I help creatives show up online so that they can get back to living the life that they pictured. I like it, and then and I love it because you didn't say how you did it or what you yeah. do, but creatives are like, yes, thank you very much because I would like to get back to being a creative and stop doing all this like website crap. Yeah, not that website stuff is crap, but. As a creative website, it's not like top it. of line, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it, that's really, that's great. And so a longer, more professional version of what I do is as a marketing strategist, it's my job to make sure when your clients and prospects need what you sell, they think of you first. It's a little bit longer, but it still talks about the problem that I solve. It still talks about like, um, like their brand awareness, right? And then it also, it just it leads to the intent of like, oh, good, revenue. Yeah. I can increase my sales, right? It has that like kind of gist to it. And so what happens is that a human has an 8.25 second attention span. I think it's down to eight seconds now, the last article that I read. And so you literally have eight seconds to grab their attention. Eight seconds. So how are you going to do that? You're going to do that in a 60 second pitch? Probably not. So I say a, a good power pitch is 15 seconds or less. That's now, the great. other weird thing about that is that if you have to stand up and like, I, do you, networking stuff, sometimes you're like you have to give your pitch and then say your name and then you're done. Like it's not like one-on-one -on -one networking. So my thing is that people say their name and the company name first. I say, say it last. Cause you want to grab their attention with something funny or something interesting that you say as your pitch and then end with your name and your, the company name. Because that's the last thing they're going to remember. They're not, they don't remember if you say it in the first. So it's, here's the thing. It sounds like as you're listening to this, this episode, it's like, oh my God, I got to do all this work. This is the cool thing about it. Once you do it though, it's done. Like, and then you just use it over and over and over again. And you can walk in to that networking event confident and like, I know what to say. I have a clear message. I know exactly who my target audience is. I know what I, what I want to say. And then you're going to have better conversations. Better conversations lead to more meetings, more meetings lead to more sales. So honestly, it starts with that first impression, in my personal opinion. And I love the advice to say your name at the end, because I do like, even when I'm listening to people, 
I hear their name and then I'm like trying to remember the name and I miss the next part, you know? <laughs> yes, I do. Or that. I listen to the next part and then I'm like, wait, what was their name? Wait, what so, was their name? Yeah, yeah, exactly. No. It's – yeah. That's such good advice. It's such a simple thing to just um, switch. So <laughs> yeah. That's uh, – that's and they're probably really remember your name, your company more than they'll remember your name. So that's yeah. why I say name and then name of your company. Because they're not yeah. going to – because you're – well, unless you're a speaker or something and say your personal name is your company name, they remember the name first before they'll remember your your name. So don't take it personally. So once we're done with our networking, we're, we've pitched ourselves, we've talked to people – how do you follow up with people after a networking event or how do you continue the relationship from that? Great question because this is where another huge problem that people have. They don't set time in their calendar for follow-up. So let's say you're going to a breakfast meeting with the local chamber or your industry group or where that might be. That's from 7.30 until 9.30, let's say. Then either that afternoon Or the next day, schedule 30 minutes on your calendar for follow-up. And it could be simply linking in with them. It could be sending them a a piece of, um, I say propaganda, which is terrible, but like a marketing material (laughs) that that you promised to send them. Or a connection. Some of the best networking is, without having to sell, is the fact that you say, oh my gosh, I know somebody who is, what you're looking for, I know somebody, let me connect the two of you. And so it adds value to that relationship because following up is not just like, Hey, I met you yesterday. Want to have coffee? Yeah. That's, that's not a follow up. A follow up is, it was great talking to you. You mentioned the fact that you're looking for a web designer. I know this great person in Colorado, you know, she's a great web designer. Let me connect you guys. It's that kind of follow up. That's really important, but put it in your calendar. And then stick to it. And it's it could take you five minutes. And then you've got 25 minutes of free, you know, extra time. But at the same time, just schedule it in your calendar. The other thing that I think people don't do is they don't realize that the person that they're talking to is not the person they're selling to. And this is where I get a lot of people to kind of just go, huh. When you're networking and you're talking to somebody, don't talk to them as if you want them to be your customer. Talk to the Rolodex in their head. Okay, I'm dating myself. Not a Rolodex, but a CRM, right? Talk to the all the contacts that they have in their head because what you want them to do is say, oh, let me introduce you to these three people or I have two people that I know that need what you have or, hey, I was just thinking that sounds like something that I need. So if they need it, bonus, great, perfect. But if you don't talk to them like you're selling to them and you're just informing them how you help other people, they're thinking about all kinds of people they can introduce you to. That is is networking in my opinion. I guess for me, it's the, it's the, like, don't, don't do the networking unless you plan on doing something with it. Okay. Right. Because that's what we do. Like our marketing is about the call to action. You, I could write a book, uh, I can let it sit on the shelf or I could do something with it. Right. You could do a social post and do something with it, have a beautiful website, but do something with it and have that call to action and figure out what that is. And networking is no different. Have an intent. Where do you suggest people finding these networking opportunities? And are they all in person or are there some ways to network online? Oh, absolutely. In person and online. Um, In person, I believe, is more powerful. However, your customers might not be local. So networking online is great. I would start with um, once you've defined what your ideal customer is. So just super quick. I know you've talked about this in other podcasts that I've listened to from you is that there's a difference between an ideal customer and a target audience. The ideal customer is the person who's actually buying from you or using your product, and the the target audience is where they hang out. So just reiterating that fact. So what happens is that if you define who that is and they have a specific industry or geographical location or whatever that case might be, and you know where they go, where they hang out, go there. So one of my clients... Um, we do uh, their employer branding and we do a lot of recruiting with them. Well, they have a lot of technicians, you know, second and third shift technicians. And it sounds really weird, but um, the people that they're hiring hang out in a very specific geographical location. And some of them are bars. 
So we literally do like, you know, this TV screen, sometimes it does advertisements. We go there because that's where they hang out. And it sounds weird, but it's like, no, you got to go where they hang out. So where they hang out physically, but digitally as well. If they're not on Facebook, don't waste your money on Facebook ads. You know what I mean? Um, but if they are a very specific industry, sponsor events, become a, become a speaker at one of their events. Do all the things in that industry so you show up where they hang out and have a booth, do those kinds of things. But it starts with knowing who that ideal client is and where they hang out. Then you go, that's where you go networking, in my opinion. I love that advice. Yeah, that's great. And we talked a little bit about like Chamber of Commerce right. um, and there's always like just local business groups, I feel like too, that you can start there. And a lot of the times you find one group that you network with and they, somebody that you meet there networks somewhere else. And you can kind of yeah. just like mind map all the way out into lots of different places too. Yeah. And it's okay to, to, to try something out and then say no. Like I've gone to, as a guest to networking things and I'm just like, great group, not my vibe, not my not my people, um, but, you know, thank you very much for letting me have a guest. I mean, you have to let them down nicely to say, I've chosen to invest my time and, and money elsewhere, but I truly appreciate you've got a great group. It's just not where I'm looking to go. And most networking pe- companies, people are like, yeah, I get it. Because they don't want you there either if you're just going to be there. They want you to be fruitful and like add to the conversations and add value to the people that you're networking with. So try out. It's okay to go and ask to be a guest place and say, hey, I'm just looking for someplace to go. Can I see if this is it? So, Any tips for getting over nerves for introverts going to these kinds of things? (laughs) Tech, yeah. I am actually an introvert um, at my core. So I'm what's called an extroverted introvert. I have very extroverted tendencies like this, um, but I am quite the introvert. So for me... It's literally sitting in my car and doing something that makes me joyful. So listening to music, you could be listening to a podcast, you could do whatever it is to get you in the mindset of going in there. Now, the the introverted aspect of things is that if you walk in not knowing what to say, you're going to be like sitting against the wall, not talking to anybody. But if you have a power pitch, you know exactly what to say, you know who your target audience is, you have all the things that builds the confidence for you to walk in that networking with confidence the introvertedness can take second, a back seat to the confidence. And so I think having that confidence of knowing where your pitch is, knowing who you want to talk to, what are your intentions of that? The introvertedness can kind of get a back seat to that. Now, you're not going to be walking in there just going like, I'm here. <laughs> walking in, right? Like, I've entered the room, the party can start. You know, we're not going to be that person, but at the same time, you know, it can be hard to have like three or four people standing there just to walk up and introduce yourself. But if you know what to say, you know who your audience is, you know all those things, it gives you the confidence to walk up and to start introducing yourself. Well, and I think there's always going to be another introvert there. (laughs) (laughs) Guaranteed. (laughs) Right. And so I tend to seek out the other person that's by themselves or like looks as nervous as you feel <laughs> yeah. and and be be the person that makes them feel welcome. And I feel like that helps me so much get past that. Well, and then you can go together. Then you have yes. a buddy now to go into those groups of three and four and like talk to together. Yeah, yes. That's really yeah. good advice. Yeah. Okay. I have loved talking to you, Lisa. Where can people find you? So rebelgirlmarketing.com is my website. Uh, Lisa Rabel is my name and you can find me on LinkedIn, um, on Facebook too. But the best way to get a hold of me is just to go to my website, to the contact me page, um, or just email me at lisa at rebelgirlmarketing.com. I'd love to talk to anybody who's just sitting there struggling with, I don't know what to do. I know I need marketing, but I don't know where to start. Those are some great people for me to have a conversation with. That's awesome. We're going to wrap up with a lightning round of questions. I did not pre-warn you about these. You did not. (laughs) There's three (laughs) questions. Uh, They're pretty easy ones though. So what are, what's a book that you've read lately that you've loved? It can be um, a business book or a fun book. So my fun book is The Midnight Library. 
I love that book. It's um, it's very um, soul searching, okay. and unpredictable and fun and all those other things, and you laugh out loud that kind of stuff. So I loved love that book for like pleasure. Right now, I am reading a book called um, Speak with Confidence. Because I truly believe whether you've been speaking for five minutes or five years, it's always good to hone in on your skills and learn from other experts. So this is a um, this is a, a speaking coach who wrote a book that I saw present at a American Marketing Associ- Association event at one point in time. So yeah, I'm reading that right now for business. And then what what free resource or um, educational thing have you found super beneficial lately? Oh, um, free resource. I love podcasts. I love, I love listening to them. I love being on them as a guest. I love my own podcast. And so you can learn if you have a very specific subject matter you're trying to learn about podcasting, I think is one of the best ways to do that because you can listen to it as you're driving to appointments or walking the dog. And I just think it's really great to to learn from subject matter experts without having to hire them. I, yeah, I'm a big podcast listener. Do you have a favorite recent episode of your podcast that we should send people to? <laughs> sure, I actually have two. Okay. Um, so my life coach friend that I talked about, her name is Krista Morrissey, and she was on my show a couple months ago, and she talked about mindset. So we talked about the whole. Like if you need to check yourself before you walk into a networking event, you should do that before appointments as well. But she talked about mindset and how marketing as as a mindset, it helps you build that business development without actually trying. So we talked about that. And then my friend, Susan Trumpler, who wrote, oh, oh, can I swear on your show? Sure. It's it's called, oh shit, I'm in sales, making sales your BFF. And so she wrote that book and um, it's all about like, all the basics of selling, the things you don't think about. And so her name is Susan Trumpler. And we talked about selling as an entrepreneur and how hard it can be if you let it be. But if you do all the prep work and you do all these things ahead of time, just like having a great power pitch before you walk into networking, it doesn't feel like a sales call anymore. It, it, it There's no pressure to it. And she has great advice and nuggets. So those, those, two, um, those two specific interviews I really... I, I actually listen to them again because sometimes they, they teach me again when I get into a weird mindset because we all do. We do. <laughs> You're right. We'll make sure to link those both of those episodes in the show notes. And then the last question is, is there something that you've been learning or have learned recently that you are just really into? What's making you curious? Um, what's sparking your interest lately? Um, what am I learning lately? I'm learning how to be a better business owner. So I've, I've intentionally started taking classes on how, you know, how to show up as the CEO of my own company. Um, I can do that, but it's all the back end stuff that I that I've always just kind of ignored or gave to somebody else to do. That I'm really learning how to be better at that. It's making me more, more intentional. It's making me more productive. It's um, like getting rid of all the squirrels that kind of, you know, suck your attention. And so I, I'm really loving learning how to just manage my time better and be a more productive business owner. So I have more free time to do the things that I want to do, which is why we start our business sometimes in the first place. Yes. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Lisa. It was so great talking to you today. Yeah, you too. Hope you have a great day. Thanks. You too. There were so many gems in this interview with Lisa. I hope you got as much out of it as I did. I really enjoyed her quick training with me on perfecting my own power pitch. I'd love to hear from you what your biggest takeaways were. You can DM me over on Instagram at Dear Kate Brand Strategy and just let me know what you thought of the episode. Let me know if there are some other guests you'd like to see on the show or other topics you'd like covered. I do have some solo episodes planned and coming up and look forward to talking to you again soon. <music> <laughs>